All right, let's go ahead and, and get started tonight. We may have a few that's, that'll continue to try to get in. We've got a really good number. Um, appreciate so much you, you, you continuing to try. Uh, obviously, we're still stuck in these kind of, well, just rather unusual times, but I continue to be impressed. I continue to be encouraged. Um, and just thank you so much for, for who you are and, and what you stand for. It's really good to see um, everybody tonight. You know, our, our world is really troubling for a variety of reasons um, right now. And if, if you're like me, I, I don't know exactly what to make of everything right now. I, I've kind of been all over the map when it comes to this virus. I've, uh, I've been all over the place by way of just even developing an opinion of it. I'm not exactly sure what to believe, but you know, I was thinking today, that's okay. Um, I'm a Christian, and this world is not my home. And we, we've talked a lot uh, about that. And so as always, um, as the people of God, we're going to do two things, ultimately. Um, everything's going to center around these two things. We're going to love God with everything that we have. With everything in our beings, we're going to love him. And number two, we're going to love our neighbors as ourselves. And brethren, I, I know that that is simple. But it is so true. If we will do those two things, we will navigate these crazy times, even though we've been driven out of our comfort zones, which, let me say, might not be that bad of a thing, right? And we'll put our complete hope and trust in an unchanging God, who I'll just remind you, he has the power to take all of this away the moment he chooses to do so. So let's put our faith, let's put our trust in him. Um, and let's remember that this world is not our home. You know, I have to say tonight, I, we've got a number of, of things uh, to be thankful for. Um, our God, he has answered our prayers um, on, on so many behalves. Um, I, I think about our sister Beverly, who I, I know everything's not perfect, um, but she continues to improve for, from her recent surgery, and, and we prayed that, that that would go well, and it did, and we're so thankful for that. Um, our sister Louise Stevenson, she continues to improve at home. She's here with us tonight, um, and from where we were a few weeks ago, God has certainly answered our prayers on, on her behalf. I asked you to pray for Brother Curtis Byers, who's an elder in uh, Henderson, Tennessee, and he continues to improve um, from a recent stroke, and, and we're just so thankful for that. Um, I think about Kylie's brother's um, test um, that came back that I asked you to pray for. It revealed that his cancer had not spread, and um, he's going to be able to take a, a chemo treatment that's not going to be too awful hard on him, um, allow him to continue to, to be the type of uh, father that he wants to be. Um, so I, I just think about all the prayers just in the last few weeks um, that God has answered on our behalf, and I'm just reminded of what an awesome and loving and merciful and caring and powerful God um, that we serve. And then this afternoon, a couple hours ago, um, I got a text from Kim Hart, and she said, mom's going to be able to come over to the house for a little while, and she's going to be able to join us in our service tonight. And I, I got off the treadmill and I, I text her back and I just uh, elated because we have been praying for Marion for so long and, and she's been through so much um, during this COVID stuff. It's been so hard on, on so many of our people and we just keep praying and we're praying and we're praying and we're praying and, and here she is. We get to see her smiling face tonight. And I think about the technology that allows her to be with us tonight, even though there's no way she could be with us in person. Um, I, I'm just, I'm swollen with gratitude, um, at just how good our, our God is. Um, and Marion, uh, we're just so thankful, um, to see you tonight. Um, we love you. We miss you. And we know that this has been really hard. Um, but I also want you to know that through this all, um, your brethren ha have been fervent in prayer for you. And, um, it's really, really good. Um, to see your smiling face tonight. Um, so you, you mean a whole lot to us, and um, it's really good to see you tonight. So we as a congregation of God's people, um, we have so much um, to be thankful for. And, and that being said, um, we have much to be praying for um, currently. I, I want us to be really, really intentional uh, family 
um, in our prayers right now for, for Mark and Rhonda and Rachel and, and Betty, um, certainly, that entire family. Um, Mark and Rhonda are, are navigating a whole lot right now uh, as our sister Betty ends, um, begins to near the end of her life. And um, as I talked with, with Rhonda uh, yesterday about some of these things, um, she brought up that, that Betty's a faithful child of God and the hope that that family has and the joy that they have, even though this is really, really hard. Um, as a result of her faithfulness, they have great confidence of where she'll spend eternity. And I, I just can't think of a better feeling um, than that. So we're so thankful for the hope that our sister has, but it's tough right now. And it's an awful disease um, that has touched so many of our families. So uh, Mark, Rhonda, family, um, we love you and we're praying for you. And if there's anything that we can do for you, um, please, I speak for all of us. Um, don't hesitate for a second um, to reach out for us, reach out to us. Let's also be prayerful in regards uh, to Nancy and Howard. Um, obviously, they're here tonight, but Howard's got some back issues going and Nancy's got some other issues going, We've got some kidney issues on top of the mild case of, of the shingles. So let's be prayerful. She also said that our, our brother, Nick Davis, their grandson, whom I think the world of, um, he came home from work this afternoon with a fever. He's going to go to the doctor tomorrow. And so um, certainly when we hear fever during these times, um, we, we, we certainly need to be um, prayerful um, on, on behalf of, of Nick and, and that entire family. Um, continue to pray for the Weedman family. They, they, they've been through a, a whole lot. As Betty and Jeff are, are caring for Betty's mother. I know she's had some other family members that are um, really struggling with their health. Um, so let's be mindful of, uh, uh, of that family. Continue to pray for Janice Brown as she continues um, to recover. And, and let me say this, and, and I know I'm going a little longer than, than usual, but um, pray for our elders. I, I keep bringing this up. Um, I, I know that the decisions are, that, that are weighing on them, that they're weighty, and they're, they're trying their best to figure out um, the best way to move forward. I know they're concerned about our children, they're concerned about all of us, and um, they want to do what's best for us as a church. And um, as I've said before, you guys, we, we, we're, we're behind you and we're thankful for you and we love you and, and we recognize um, the complexity of some of the decisions that you're making, but we're so thankful that you have stood for the truth through all of this and have not wavered or compromised one time. Uh, and I speak for all of us, that's not lost um, on any of us. So thank you, and, and we'll continue uh, to pray for you. Um, so our plate is full by way of prayer, um, but what a blessing it is, brethren, to know that, that we have the ear of our Creator. God who cares for us and knows exactly what we need. So let's be a praying church, right? So with all of that said, and I appreciate you indulging me in that, with all of that said, let's begin our time together as has been our custom over the last several weeks. I'd ask you to turn to the 119th Psalm, please. By way of preparing our minds to enter into our time together tonight, I want to read from the 119th Psalm. I want to pick up where we left off from last week, that being stanza 41, please. 119th Psalm, begin reading with me at stanza 41. The psalmist says, May your loving kindness also come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your word. So I will have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust in your word. And do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I wait for your ordinances. So I will keep your law continually forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. I will also speak of your testimonies before kings and shall not be ashamed. I shall delight in your commandments, which I love. And I shall lift up my hands to your commandments, which I love. And I will meditate on your statutes. I've asked Brother Dan Lindauer, if he would, to lead us in our opening prayer tonight. Um, Dad's going to lead us in, in our singing in, in just a moment. I'll have the message tonight, and then at the end of the service, uh, Brother Donald Newman Sr. is going to lead us in, in our closing prayer. So, gentlemen, those of you who are leading in the service tonight, you'll have to unmute yourself and then mute yourself back um, when you're finished. So, Brother Dan, if you would lead us in that opening prayer, please. Our God and our Almighty Father in heaven, 
Father, we are so thankful for all the many blessings that you have so richly bestowed upon us. Father, as Brother Justin mentioned already, we are so thankful, Father, for this avenue of prayer that we have to be able to communicate with you, to let you know of our needs. Although you already know, Father, before we even ask of the things that we have requested. Father, we are so thankful for the prayers that have been answered. We thank you for the health that's been restored to those, the comfort that you've given to those. Father, we thank you so much for the fact that Sister Marion is able to be with us tonight. Father, we are also prayerful for those who are going through trying times at this time in their life. Father, we pray that you be with them, that you comfort them throughout these many trials, that they may focus upon you, Father, and your loving kindness. Father, we pray that you be with our sister Betty as she nears the end of her life, Father. But let us be ever mindful that if we live a faithful life to you, we have something so much better waiting for us. Be with all of those, Father, who are caring for loved ones. Comfort them and be with them and give them the patience that they need. Father, we pray thanking you, knowing that you have gone through the loss, too, of your son who died upon that cross, who suffered that great, torturous, cruel death upon that cross, only to overcome death, to bridge that gap for us to one day be in heaven with you. Father, we pray that you may always watch over us, and that you guide us, and that you protect us safely, Father, through all these different times. Let us be ever mindful, Father, for our elders, not only collectively, Father, but let us individually let them know that we appreciate the decisions that they are making, that we back them, Father, in the decisions that they make, and we know that they are looking out for the best of us during these trying times. Father, give them the mind to make the proper decisions. We're so thankful for the blessing that we have through the technology and the ability to be able to assemble together, not only in the parking lot, but through the Zoom, that we were able to still continue to worship you, Father, and praise you. We pray that we may always keep you in the forefront of our mind, that we always stay into your word, Father. We thank you for all the great efforts, not only the elders, but what our brother Justin has been doing to keep us active in your word, Father, through the videos, and we're so appreciative of that. And Father, we just pray that you continue to guide us and that we will always look to you, Father, for that guidance through your word. Father, we thank you for each and everything that you have done for us, and that we ask that you will watch over us, Father. And as we study your word, we pray that we may grow stronger, that our light may shine brighter in this world, that we will show love where there is strife. We will show compassion where there is hatred. And that we will show an example, Father, that we can all work together as one body in you. For this is in your son's holy and precious name that we do pray. Amen. Our first song will be number 69, We Will Glorify. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. 
He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the King of kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of lords, who is the great I am. For 379, God will take care of you. Be not dismayed, whatever be tight, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through days of toil when heart doth fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fierce your path assail, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. All you may need, he will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Clean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Uh, what, what an appropriate uh, song for us tonight. You know, it's great to be a Christian. Uh, that's really been the theme of our study over the last uh, several weeks, looking at the transcendent joy um, of the Apostle Paul as we see an example of a man who was characterized by joy in spite of some really tough physical circumstances. And we've been highlighting this idea that true joy is not found in physical circumstances. Circumstances that, that often in the physical sense are, are ever-changing and, and are out of our control oftentimes. And so as a Christian, our joy, it can't be taken away. It's spiritual in nature. Our, our joy is found in our forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. But we've noted that this joy that the Christian experiences, this peace and contentment that a child of God experiences, it's relational in the sense that as a result of our being forgiven, we are reconciled back to our loving Father, an eternal relationship that will ultimately take us from the grave uh, to eternity in heaven with Him. It's also relational in the sense that upon baptism, into Christ. Acts chapter 2 at verse 47 tells us that we're added to the church. We're added to the kingdom of God, where we're blessed with brothers and sisters in Christ who, who share their lives with us, who encourage us, who work with us, who weep with us, who rejoice with us. This really just most fabulous strengthening relationship that ultimately is helping us 
get to heaven. And so tonight, as we bring this, I guess you could say, mini uh, study to a close, I want to add just two more really fundamental elements as to why I believe that it is absolutely the most wonderful thing that it's great to be a child of God. And I think it's really important for us to be reminded of who we are and what a great blessing it is to be a child of God and to really dwell on this idea, but also have the ability to communicate this to others. Hey, if you're not a child of God, and maybe you're a little frustrated right now with the way the world is, and possibly you're coming to, um, you're coming to the conclusion that, you know what, there's got to be more to this. Well, we want you to know that there is more to this. And that it's great to be a child of God in the here and now. And it's great to be a child of God by way of what we await. So tonight, as we, as we bring this to a close, let, let's add this. I think it's wonderful to be a child of God in the here and now, because ultimately the child of God has a purpose. And that purpose is making a lasting difference in the lives of others. If you have your Bibles open, I want you to turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, this is a text that, that we've spent so much time with over the past um, year, as it was our theme text for, for 2019. But I want to read it again. In 2 Peter chapter 1, I want you to look with me beginning at verse 5. 2 Peter chapter 1, look at verse 5. The Bible says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you'll be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. One of the things that we talked about by way of our theme last year from this text is the idea of spiritual growth. We talked about this idea of growing one day at a time, being in the Word of God, allowing the Word of God to penetrate our hearts, allowing it to yield fruit in our lives as we're growing. And you know, brethren, throughout Scripture, we are commanded to grow. So let me say this. I think it's absolutely tragic when children of God simply warm the pews and refuse to grow. Now, let me give you a couple of obvious reasons why this is so tragic. Number one, it's tragic because when we do that, we're disobedient to God's will because we're commanded to grow. And there's eternal consequences for that if we don't repent. So if you're not growing, you're dying. And I would encourage you tonight to make some changes. Get in God's word immediately. But number two, let me say this. It's tragic because we miss out on so much joy. Let me explain. People that refuse to grow miss out on opportunities to share the gospel of Jesus Christ right? You can't teach what you don't know. Number two, people that refuse to grow miss out on opportunities to teach a Bible class. People that refuse to grow miss out on opportunities to help influence the lives of others because they're simply not influential because they haven't grown. Brethren, I can think of nothing that brings the child of God more joy than to step into the life of another, to take someone who had no hope, but through sharing the gospel message with them, as it falls on a receptive and honest heart, they obey the gospel and they go from no hope to hope. Can you think of anything that would bring you more joy? I can't think of a more joyful experience when we get to watch someone step into the waters of baptism and be immersed in water for the forgiveness of their sins, from no hope to hope, from dead in sin to alive in Christ. I'm going to tell you something. If you've ever experienced that, if you've ever had the great privilege to share the gospel with someone and it fall on that honest and good heart, 
And as a result, they, they come to a knowledge of the truth and they recognize their sins and they recognize their dependence upon God and they obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Or how about this? Maybe it's a struggling Christian, a fellow brother or sister in Christ who's lost their way and they're depressed and they're disappointed and they're discouraged and through maybe the course of life, through a course of, uh, of a number of bad decisions, they're, they're just down and they're falling and they're slipping and you like Barnabas, you go and you grab them by the arm and you bring them up. And you pray with them and you study with them. And in essence, through the word of God, through your love, through your encouragement, you nurse them back to spiritual health. And then years later, you see them and you see their family and you see their children, that they're doing well spiritually. And to know that you played a small part in that, in being a messenger for God and his word. I can think of nothing that would bring the child of God more joy than that. That's a life of purpose. That's truly making a difference. As Jesus would say, it's bearing fruit. John chapter 15, go over there with me for just a moment. In John chapter 15, we looked at this in our discipleship class a number of weeks ago. We, we know the first 11 verses of, of John chapter 15. It deals with the idea of bearing fruit, being connected to the vine, that vine being Jesus. And in John chapter 15, if you jump down to verse 8, John chapter 15 at, at verse 8, listen to Jesus. Jesus says in verse 8, my father is glorified by this. Now, now let's stop right there. As Christians, that phrase right there should grab our attention. Because after all, that's why we're here. We are created for his glory. That's our purpose in life, to glorify him. We've talked much about this year, um, the idea of stewardship before all of this COVID stuff hit. And we're going to come back to that for sure. But Jesus says, my father is glorified by this. Look at the next phrase. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit. And so prove to be my disciples. Verse 9 of John chapter 15 says, Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. Verse 10, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. That's John, full. That's John chapter 15, verses 8 through 11. What glorifies God? What brings God glory? It's bearing fruit. What does it mean to bear fruit? Very simply, it's making a lasting spiritual difference in the life of another. That's fruit. I, I go back to a passage that we looked at in previous studies. You remember in Philippians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul, he, he speaks of this inner conflict that he's experiencing. Philippians chapter 1, look with me again at verse 21. Philippians chapter 1, look with me at verse 21. The Apostle Paul says, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I am to live on in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me. And I don't know, I don't know which to choose, Paul says. Verse 23 says, But I'm hard-pressed from both directions, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, for that's very much better Yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. Convinced of this, I know that I'll remain and continue with you for your progress and joy in the faith so that your proud confidence in me may abound in Christ Jesus through my coming to you again. Don't you love that? Brethren, as a child of God, listen to me. We have a message. We have a testimony that can change the lives of people for all eternity. Somebody loved us. Somebody loved our family member, our grandmother, our grandfather. Somebody loved us enough to take the time to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And our lives have been changed forever. We, have that same opportunity, brethren. Listen to me. When we get involved in the lives of others, regardless of how messy they may be, and we share the gospel, when we get involved in the lives of our brethren and we strengthen them through the gospel of Jesus Christ, we get involved and we encourage them. We are helping people spend eternity in heaven. I want you to think about that. You think about the joy 
that's involved in that. Paul's conflict, listen, I can go home and be with the Lord, which I know is better, but man, I got work to do by way of my brethren. I got work to do by way of the lost. I need to bear more fruit. I need to bring more people to Christ. I need to strengthen more of my brethren. I would argue, brethren, helping others get to heaven, there is great joy in fulfilling that purpose. You see, the Christian's joy, independent of physical circumstance, because it's spiritual. It's being forgiven. It's relational by way of our relationship with our Heavenly Father, by way of our relationship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. It's helping others get to heaven. But then this last one, rather the joy of being a child of God, it's great to be a child of God because we are people of hope, of confident expectation, assurance. You know, the faithful child of God, regardless of where they find themselves on this side of eternity by way of their physical circumstances, by way of their socioeconomics, by way of their health, the child of God lives with hope regardless of circumstance. Listen to me. The faithful child of God, regardless of where you're at tonight, you know with all of your heart it's going to get better. How fabulous is that? You know, there's worry and there's anxiety in uncertainty. I think that's our struggle right now with our current circumstance. We, we've never been here before. We just don't know how this is all going to turn out for us in the immediate. So it, it, immediate. So it gives us just these feelings of, of, of uneasiness, right? But as the people of God, there's great joy in hope. Hebrews 6 says it's our anchor. There's great joy in assurance, great joy in peace, in knowing. Faithful children of God live with the blessed assurance that we sing about, that they know how all of this ends for them no matter how it appears right now. You know, there were a couple of constants in the life of Paul that we just looked at in Philippians chapter one. Number one, Paul was going to do whatever in his power to help his brethren and to help the lost get to heaven. That was a constant. But I'll say something else. Paul was confident by way of his salvation. Paul knew where he was going to spend eternity. If you go back to Philippians chapter one at verse 21, and you just look at that first verse there in our text, Philippians one at verse 21, Paul says for to me, listen to this, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Only the faithful child of God has that perspective. Nobody else on the face of the earth sees death as gain, but the faithful child of God. Because the people that don't believe in God, that don't have this type of hope, when they die, they're like Rover. They're dead all over, right? But not for the child of God. Our death is not the end of things. For to me, he says, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Brethren, that's assurance. That's confidence. That's faith. That's hope. The apostle Paul knew exactly where he was going to spend eternity. What about you? What about me? You know, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 at verse 7, as the apostle Paul is nearing the end of his time on this earth, he famously would say, 2 Timothy 4 at, at verse 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I've kept the faith. Listen to the confidence in which the apostle Paul is able to speak. He says, in the future, there's laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Uh, brethren and friends, let me ask you tonight, if Jesus came back tonight, or if you died tonight, where would you spend your eternity? That's the question. That, that, that's the question that all of us need to consider. And, and let me add to that by saying this. If you don't know 
If you're not sure whether or not you're going to spend eternity in heaven, I would suggest to you that something's missing. Something's out of place. Changes need to be made. And I would also say, if you're not certain of your salvation, you're missing out on great peace and joy and contentment. And it doesn't have to be that way. I can tell you this with 100% confidence. God wants you to go to heaven. And he has done everything to ensure on his end that you have that opportunity. He sent his son to this earth to die on that old rugged cross for me and for you so that none of his special creation, that being the human race, would ever have to spend a moment in hell, but also have the ability to leave this life with great hope and perspective. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the apostle Paul would say, beginning at verse 8, but since we are of the day, let us be sober having put on the breastplate of righteousness, a breastplate of faith and, and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. He goes on to say in verse 9, for God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 8 tells us that God wants us to dwell on our hope. He wants us to, to be our motivation. It's hope that drives us and allows us to have this joyful perspective that we've been talking about in this series of lessons, how it's great to be a Christian. But verse 9 tells us that God has destined us to be saved. That's why he sent his beloved son to this earth. Brethren and friends, listen to me. We can have confidence in our salvation. That's not arrogance. I love how Paul puts it in Romans chapter 8 at verse 16. Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 16, he says, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. Now, let's think about that for a moment. What's Paul saying? The Holy Spirit of God, he reveals his will. He reveals his promises for us. And we have his word in written form as a result of it. And as a result, brethren, we can know exactly what God wants. We can know exactly what God demands. We can know exactly what is best for us. And when we are obedient to that revealed word, brethren, through the Holy Spirit, our spirit testifies that we are truly the children of God. And if we are true children of God, defined as defined there in verse 16, I want you to look at verse 17. In Romans chapter 8 at verse 17, Paul goes on to say, and if children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. That's the goal. Brethren and friends, it's great to be a Christian. It's a life of true joy. It's a life of true peace. The joy that the faithful experience is transcendent of earthly circumstances. No virus, no government, no persecution can do anything to touch our hope, to diminish our relationship with our God. We sing blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. It's great to be a Christian. If you're not a Christian, I encourage you with all that I have. I do everything I have by the word of God to try to convince you that you are missing out on a joy and a peace, and a perspective that transcends this whole world and all its issues. Where will you turn when your health fails you? Where will you turn when tragedy strikes? Who will you look to when you lose your job? When you're near the end of your life, 
what we have to look forward to. So I ask you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Would you be willing, even this night, to repent of your sins, to confess him as such, and be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? You know, maybe you're on here tonight. And as I ask that question, where would you spend eternity? Maybe you've obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, but you know your life's not what it ought to be. You know there's sin in your lives that need to be corrected. And, and you don't have that blessed assurance that God wants you to have. You got to get rid of that sin. You got to shed it. Go to God. Ask him for forgiveness. If we can help you, if we can pray with you, if we can talk with you, open up God's word together. Listen, we're all struggling. At some level, we're all struggling with our faith from time to time. So you're in wonderful company. We're all sinners in desperate need of God's grace. Let us help you. Let us be there for you. So if your life's not right tonight, know that it's great to be a child of God. It's spiritual. It's forgiveness. It's relationships. It's a life of helping others get to heaven. And it's that blessed assurance. For the rest of us, brethren, let's tell the people that we come in contact with that God is blessing us with right here, right now. Let's tell people how great it is to be a child of God. Thank you so much um, for listening the way that you do. Dad, if you'll lead us in, in one more song, please. Let's sing number 454, Blessed Assurance. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest, I and my Savior. I'm happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Again, it's so good uh, to see you tonight. So good to, to see your smiling faces. Um, thank you again for trying. Um, continue to pray for all that was mentioned at the beginning uh, of our service. If you need something, please let one of us know. Let us be there for you. Um, for those who might be visiting with us tonight, we want you to know that this coming Lord's Day, first day of the week, we're going to be meeting at 9.30 a.m. in our back parking lot over at Kenwood Church of Christ. Um, you can go to our website and get details by way of directions. Um, for that, we continue to meet in our parking lot to ensure everyone's safety. Um, we're just not able right now to go back in our building, um, but we're coming together upon the first day of the week, and God's providing a way. And we're singing together. We're praying together. We're taking up the Lord's Supper together. We're studying together. We're giving up our means. We're doing um, everything in spirit and in truth. And with that, I, I'm confident that God is pleased. So 
If you'd like to be a part of that, please, we'd love nothing more um, than to have you join us. Um, I would also encourage all of us, we're continuing to read in the book of Nehemiah this week. Tomorrow will be Nehemiah chapter four, Friday be Nehemiah chapter five. Um, so far for me, um, anyways, it, it's been a really thought provoking study, very practical by way of application for us. And um, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the week. So those videos will be posted on our YouTube page, found at our website, www.kenwoodchurchofchrist.com. And um, for those of us who are members here, there's on our Facebook page and also the public Facebook page as well. So share those out. We get really good responses from those. A lot of people that are listening and in God's word that haven't been. Um, and, and, and that's what it's all about. So if those help you, um, please join us um, in that. Again, so good to see you. Um, I'm going to ask Brother Donald Newman uh, Sr. if he would unmute himself and, and lead us in a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks unto you for this opportunity we've had to come together in this manner to study that word and sing praises unto you. We also pray for the sick that were mentioned that the means of treating them will bring them back to a portion of their health. We also pray for Sister Mary, and we're glad to see her out among us. We pray for the shut-ins that they'll take comfort in what your word says. Heavenly Father, we pray that uh, these people that are trying to figure out what to do with this virus, they'll come up with some sort of cure so we can uh, meet again as we should. As we go on through this life, Heavenly Father, pray that we'll always look to you and always strive to do your will. Please forgive us of our sins. All these things we pray for through Christ's name.